Good morning or good afternoon. Today we're going to start our next unit, which happens to be balancing equations. But before we can get to balancing equations, we have to start by doing uh, a different topic, which is called counting atoms. We saw a little bit of that on the uh, bell ringers from yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do those today. Um, you're going to find the notes in the packet you picked up yesterday that are called, uh, that's all right on page one, it's in balancing equations one. We're not actually going to do the whole thing. We're actually only going to do the. Uh, we're only going to do about probably the first three quarters of the page, and then I'm going to show you how to do some problems from today's assignment, which is page seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, on the uh, notes here, it says uh, balancing equations. It's the first part's counting atoms, we're right here. It says a formula can have two kinds of numbers. They can be subscripts and coefficients. And I'm gonna use the word coefficients in the same way your math teacher's using it. This three to the left of a formula is a coefficient. And then subscripts, you should be familiar with them from the last unit. Okay? And then what you need to know about them is that the coefficient tells you how many times the molecule repeats. So, so the three, or I'll get to that in a minute, so coefficient, and then subscripts tell you how many type of each atom are in the molecule. So what this means is I have, if I look at the six that's up here, let me put a highlighter in there. So I'm back up here. If you look at the six, that means there are six carbons in the molecule. But the three, the coefficient tells you, I have three of those molecules. So to figure out how many carbons is there, what do I have to do? I have to multiply them. So there's there are 18 carbons. Okay, here's some examples, and the way we the way we do this. Uh, uh, and on the worksheets and stuff looks like this. I'll go, okay, I have calcium equals semicolon. I have sulfur equals semicolon. And oxygen equals semicolon. So I want to point out to you that you're used to sort of treating SO4 as a unit, but now we have to count its elements individually, which is a little different from what we did before. That's really easy to do. Anything with a capital letter is an element. And if you look at the periodic table, you'll notice that all periodic table symbols have it, exactly one capital letter. So calcium sulfate, shown here, has three capital letters, C, S, and O. And that shows you it has three elements. Since there's no uh, subscript on the calcium, there's one calcium. Same with sulfur, there's no subscript. Remember this, if, if sulfur had an individual subscript, it would be right here, but it's not. So there's one. Oxygen has a subscript of four, so there are four oxygens. On the second one, I told you that when they put a coefficient, you have to multiply everything by that coefficient. So every number we would have done, uh, we will multiply by three. So I have Na equals semicolon. S, remember all capital letters are gonna be treated as their own. Now, <clears throat> let me be clear here. The capital letter gives away that it is an element, but you still have to use the element's correct symbol. So we had, we found it in the previous example, we found a capital C, but we still used its full symbol, CA. That's just a shortcut to figuring out where the elements are. And then in this case, I have two sodiums, and so I'm gonna multiply that by three. So there's actually six sodiums. Sulfur doesn't have a subscript, so there's one, I still have to multiply that by three. There's three sulfurs. And then I have four oxygens, but I have to multiply that by three, so there are 12 oxygens. Another way to look at this is if I have, uh, you will say, we'll take an easy one, NaCl, and I put a three here, what I mean is NaCl, NaCl, NaCl. That three tells you if three instances of NaCl. So you multiply everything by three. Okay, moving down here. Uh, why don't you try this example? Here, I'll highlight, make sure you know where I'm at. It's not a highlighter, that's an eraser. 
That's okay. Try that example there and push pause. And when you're done, come back and I'll show you the answer. Okay, so it's Fe equals semicolon, S equals semicolon, O equals. And all we're doing is we're multiplying all the numbers from the formula by four. So there are four irons, four sulfurs, 16 oxygen. Okay? <clears throat> the other complication you're going to find when counting atoms is uh, working with parentheses. Okay? So we're going to use... Uh, we're going to use something you're, you're hopefully used to from algebra. We're going to distribute. And we're going to use the operation multiplication for the same reason. If you take the example here, I'll move that out here, CaOH2. What this subscript means is this, CaOH2. H. It means that the, the OH section of that molecule repeats once, right? There's two instances of it. So that means we're going to multiply everything inside the parentheses by the number outside the parentheses. This is very similar to what you would do in algebra. So in the case of this first one, I have calcium equals, I have oxygen equals, and I have hydrogen equals. Notice that's hydroxide, and we're used to seeing hydroxide here. But when it comes to counting atoms, we have to take hydroxides, atoms apart, and count them individually. And I know there were two uh, different um, elements there because of the capital letter. So I'm going to go um, calcium. So the two here doesn't apply to calcium because it's not in the parentheses. So I still only have one calcium. But I now have, you know, I have an implied subscript of one on hydrogen and oxygen. I have to multiply those by two. So I have two oxygens and two hydrogens. In this example for calcium acetate, the same. I'm going to do calcium equals semicolon, hydrogen equals semicolon, uh, or throughout carbon, but it doesn't matter what order they're in. Carbon and then oxygen. In this case, um, calcium's outside of the parentheses, so we, we go with its own subscript. It doesn't have one, so that's a one. Um, just like in algebra, ones are implied if there's no other number. Okay, here's where I have to multiply. So if this is C2H3O2, C2H3O2, because there's two of them, I have to multiply this number by all the numbers inside parentheses. That should look familiar from algebra as a distribution process. So 2 times 2 carbons is 4 carbons. 2 times 3 hydrogens is 6 hydrogens. And 2 times 2 oxygens is 4 oxygens. This seems simple, and it actually is. But it's important that you understand this is a stepping stone skill in um, balancing equations. And the hard part's going to be that not only do you have to be able to do this, but you have to be excellent at it and you have to do it in your head. So we're getting good at these kind of by starting at the beginning. But remember, these are very important and you being able to understand them is critical to your success in this unit. Now, an another difficulty, what about when a an equation or a, in this case a formula contains both a coefficient and subscript, or rather, and parentheses. In this case, you have to distribute both, again, by multiplication. So let me show you here. So I have a 1 as a subscript for calcium, a 2 for, uh, for carbon, a 3 for hydrogen, a 2 for oxygen. And then I have two other numbers. I have a, a coefficient, 3 and an outside subscript 2. So every single thing is going to be multiplied by 3, including the calcium. But all the ones in parentheses will be multiplied by 2 and by 3. So here's how that looks. Calcium equals semicolon. It's not a very good semicolon. C2. I don't know I put two. It should just be C. C equals parentheses. And A G. Or not parentheses, that's a semi, or semicolon. And then finally, oxygen. So then take the example of calcium. We've got to take them one at a time. Calcium is, ti is 1, the coefficient, or the uh, subscript, rather, times 3, the coefficient, is 3. Carbon is 2 times 2, outside parentheses, is 4, times 3 is 12. Hydrogen is 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18. 
and oxygen, two times two is four, times three is 12. So notice the numbers get really big when you count them and they have both parentheses and a, uh, coefficient, and a coefficient. And this second example, n equals, remember I'm taking all the, all the elements separately and I know their elements, have capital letters, h equals, p equals, um, why don't you try this one, push pause, and uh, when you're done, come back and I'll try to do it. Okay, so how did you do? Um, I'm gonna do, so this, this okay, this hydrogen, I need to do the two to everything, right? And you don't have to write, draw out these arrows, but sometimes when you're new at this, it's helpful to do so. So I'm gonna multiply this two by literally all four elements. This three on the outside of the parentheses though, only goes to the hydrogen and the nitrogen. Okay, so two, I'll start with nitrogen. I have this three out here. Let me grab my highlighter. This three, that's an eraser, I do it again. Okay, this three, and so it's nitrogen is one times three, which is three, times two is six. Hydrogen has the four, so three times four is 12, times two is 24. Phosphorus is a one, and it's not in parentheses, so the only number that applies is this uh, coefficient out here, so it's one times two is two. Oxygen has the four, and again, there's no parentheses, so the only number that applies is the coefficient, so four times two is eight. Hopefully you got that right. Um, that's about as hard as these really ever get. Uh, we could make them a touch more complicated, but, that, but not much. If you could do that one with no problem, this is going to be easy for you, okay? Now, the one last complication I can give you is I can put the same uh, element in multiple compounds, which means you have to add them all together. So you have to count all instances and then add them. For example, I have H2 plus HCl, hydrogens in both, so I have to add the hydrogens together. I take, I do, what I do is I figure out how many hydrogens are in each of the two compounds, then add the two numbers together. <clears throat> These are easy enough that I can do that in my head. So equals, or, or I should say that I don't have to do any kind of placeholders or anything. So hydrogen, I have two on the left, one on the right. That's a total of three. And then of course there's one chlorine. On the second one, I have uh, carbon. I have oxygen in both compounds. That's the point of this question. And then I have hydrogen in the last two. So we'll, we'll just take them right in order because that's, that's good practice when we're balancing equations. Just take them in the order you find them. So I have six times one carbons. So that's six. Oxygen's the one I'm going to have trouble with. So here's a, here's a way to do it. Go ahead and make some notes. On this one, I have two times six is 12 oxygens. That looks confusing. Well, I'm just grabbing all kinds of wrong tools. Okay, so there's 12. And then on the right, I have six times one is six. So now I just add up those two numbers and oxygen is 18. Finally, with hydrogen, it's just six times two because I have to take the subscript and the coefficient and that's 12. Why don't you try the last one? Uh, push pause and when you're done, come back and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, this one's got a lot of different things in it. The only, it actually turns out as I'm looking at it to be a bad example because um, unlike what this topic is supposed to be doing, uh, n neither of those compounds has any elements in common. So this is kind of a mistake on our part. So it's just, it's actually pretty easy. Sodium is gonna be one times three. Oxygen's gonna be one times three. Hydrogen's gonna be one times three. Then calcium, remember this two that's out here only applies to what's in parentheses. So calcium is one times two, 
components too. And then uh, carbon in here, D the two does apply to carbon, so it's two times two is four. And for nitrogen, it's two nitrogens times two on, as the coefficient, also four. So that one ended up being a lot easier than it looked. Here's some guided practice, which is to say, uh, I'll do a few of these with you, but one thing you might want to do is try them, and then if you have any, or by, rather by pushing pause, and then come back when you finish. So the first one's really easy because there are no uh, complications of parentheses or coefficients, so you just, whatever their uh, subscript is, that's how many are there. Uh, we actually already did CaOH2, but we'll do it again. Calcium is one, because remember the two only applies to what's in parentheses. It does not apply to anything else. So I have one calcium, and I have uh, two oxygens, and I have two hydrogens just like we did before. On this next one, remember the three, this coefficient only applies to what's inside parentheses, so N equals three, H equals 12. There's only one phosphorus because it's not in parentheses and there's no coefficient, so that, that one's just the one. And then oxygen is just four for the same reason. Okay, next I have uh, hydrogen. So I have hydrogen. Uh, I have oxygen. And I have carbon. And this is another one that has, a, has multiple instances. So here we go. I have hydrogen. 6 times 2 is 12. Okay. I have oxygen. And so what I have to do here, I have to go oxygen. 6 times 1 is 6. And then 6 times 2 is 12. And add those together. Oxygen is 18. Carbon, 6 times 1 is 6. Okay. That's the notes. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. Um, there will be a separate video up in a, in a little bit that will show you how to do today's assignment, which is page seven. Thanks for listening. I hope this is all coming together for you. But if you have any questions, please pop into the WebEx and ask us or uh, send us an email or whatever you need. We're here to help you in any way we can. Thank you very much.